only 41 laps since his last stop. So he needed some changes on that car. Mansell back up behind Mashusta. Fittipaldi closing once again. Boy, look at him make up distance there. Fittipaldi will have the benefit of passing Mashusta on the straightaway and close even further. Now there's one more pit stop, so remember this is a championship fight here, not just a race fight. So as this rolls on, I wonder, will Paul Tracy be allowed to keep station? Because remember, Mansell is 19 points ahead of Emerson in this championship fight. If there is team orders, it certainly won't play out until the next pit stop and let the race unfold first. What do you think the chance of team orders are? You think they really would order that? I, I can't see it. It's too early in the season because Paul Tracy could still win this championship. But so I, I, I don't think he's far enough behind to say that you must step aside and help Emerson. As Tracy most definitely in the fight as well. The Valvoline race recap after 109 laps. Two caution flags have come out. One for contact with the wall. That was David Kudrave. They've had three lead changes. Mansell and Tracy have been the battlers at the front of the field. Let's go pit side, Gary Gerald. Paul, we're documenting what's going on with Mario Andretti on his first pit stop. They didn't like the way the car was handling, made a change. It did not improve. Dramatic wing changes on this second stop. Mario remembers in fourth place in the season points and right in the thick of the battle. He won on the mile at Phoenix, but boy, he has got a handful today. He's been struggling to stay in the top 12 or 13. Now look at that interval change. Here comes Mansell closing in again while Fittipaldi closes in on him. Well, Mansell just did the fastest lap that he has done in the race a couple of laps ago, 164 miles an hour average. That is only seven-tenths of a mile an hour slower than Emerson. So Mansell is not in too much trouble out there. We saw them make that wing adjustment. He obviously likes it. We talked at the start of the race about that battle for the engine supremacy. Well, there's Chevrolet in Tracy's car, Ford in Nigel Mansell's car. Let's go to Jan Bikas. Well, earlier you guys were talking about strategy, and Derek said that Emerson Fittipaldi seemed to have the fastest car on the racetrack. Emerson also thinks that's the case, and he is very much elected just to lay back a little bit and save his tires. He's letting Paul go up there and tussle with Mansell. He's just playing it very cagey. He knows he has the quickest car, and he's going to be all ready to pounce if he needs to. Boy, there's the wisdom of a veteran. And the last time he did exactly that on an oval track was the Indianapolis 500. And at the end of the day, he was running stronger than everybody and just blew everybody away. Good maneuver. Put a million dollars in his pocket. Look at Mansell. Mansell takes traffic. But Tracy handles it just as well, going to the high side. How the view from fourth place, Raul Boisel. How quickly things change. Mansell saw an opportunity in traffic, sliced down the inside, and then suddenly got boxed in, and Tracy went to the outside. Look at the traffic jam here. Up and oh, that's Boisel it. loses it, backs it down, catches the wall. That brings out the yellow, of course. Everybody gets by safely thus far, but it closed up the front of the field. Well, no, this is it. Look at this. Strategy played out here. The Penske cars are in. Everybody on the pit road. Mansell in there as well. Let's go to Gary Gerald. We wait for Nigel Mansell at this end of the pit. He's near pit out, Paul, yet to appear. Let's go to Jan Bikas at the Penske end. Paul Tracy is in. They have made the changes. They have put on the tires. There have been no chassis changes. They have just filled it with fuel, and we see Emerson Fittipaldi behind him is now also just getting underway. Both Penske cars taking advantage of this yellow. Mansell still sitting in the pits. Newman Haas team working on his car and the stop going just a bit long. They struggle with the right front. Now he's lost track position. On the last pit stop, he went from second to first. 26 seconds it took for this stop. Now he's gone from second down to third. Paul Tracy assumes the lead of the race. You saw Raul Boisel trying to drive his car back into the pits, but he'll only get it into the pits. I don't think you'll see any repairs on that car. Here it is again, Derek. He was simply too high, got into the gray, lost control, bit like Kudrave earlier, backs it in not too heavily, and he actually tries to drive that car off the racetrack. Here it is from the in-car. 
Watch the violence of the impact on his helmet. Look at him fight the wheel. Watch here. Watch his head. Boy, we said he hit it lightly. No, I don't think so. That might have been a heavier than we even anticipated. But Raul Boisel is okay with a 13-second pit stop. Paul Tracy made it in and out of the pits and took the lead. We're under yellow. Today's coverage of the Indy cars is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Pennzoil, America's number one selling motor oil for performance, protection, and quality. So the yellow is out for the third time today. Here's the reason Raul Boisel caught the wall on the back stretch. Quick little spin back the car in. We look at it once again as he was running in traffic. In a traffic jam, loses grip, doesn't manage to stop the car, and backs it in. Doesn't look that dramatic here, but this gives you an idea of what happens. That was like if somebody went to one of those big home theaters and a giant speaker. A very expensive piece of noise. Paul Tracy should be coming back to a green flag in about a lap and a half. How will the strategy, the tactics play on this race now? 130 laps are complete. Let's go to Jan. Well, Paul, talking about that pit fuel strategy, people had to come in and fill up with fuel in case this was a long yellow. But as you said, with a one and a half laps to go, I don't think anybody can make it. If it would have stayed yellow to lap 135, I think they could have made it. It's unlikely it's going to be a two-stop race. For all those people who came in, I really believe it's now a three-stop race. Jan, we'd have to agree, Jan, from this end of the pits, it looks like a three-stop race. But one thing to keep in mind, Jim McGee, who is on the radio to Nigel Mansell, was planning their first stop at 72, our first indication that they were getting terrific fuel mileage because we thought the window would be 65 to 67 laps. We asked McGee, how are you now? And he jokingly says, oh, we're okay, we can do it. Then he gave me the big wink. I agree with Jan. I think we're going to see a three-stop race definitely here. They come back to the green flag. Time will tell, 132nd lap as they come back to green from the third yellow of the day, and already the challenge is mounted. Paul Tracy, of course, the leader as he comes around to Mario Andretti. In second place is Fittipaldi. Tracy had a tremendous pit stop at 13 and a half seconds, while Nigel Mansell, you see him back there alongside of Guerrero, had a 26-second stop. That was very costly for him. They all had it into the pits as soon as the yellow came out. And at one time, Mansell thought that he was ahead of Paul Tracy when that crash happened. In fact, he really wasn't. Tracy was the leader, and Tracy went straight to the pit. It didn't make any difference because of that lengthy pit stop that he had. Mario Andretti, they just overhauled, runs down in 15th position. Had handling problems early in the race. They haven't fully been able to correct that problem. And as the race unfolds, the further back Nigel Mansell is, the easier it is for Roger Penske to make a decision on the championship and team orders. If Mansell is third or fourth or further down, then there's no reason to even think about team orders and trying to help Emerson. First part of the question, too, as Mansell and Tracy battle, is who picks up that extra point for leading the most laps. The battle is between them right now. Raul Boisel leave here with no points. He runs in fourth right now. He'll leave with 98, having earned none. Mario Andretti, if he stays in position, will also earn no points and remain in fifth place. There's still that three-way battle between Mansell, Fittipaldi, and Tracy at the top of the points fight. Robbie Gordon and Al Unser Jr. embroiled in a battle here. They've been side by side for the last two laps. We picked them up here. Gordon just about gets the edge. He's running in fifth place. You can see that there. But Al Jr. relentless in race situations, having had a terrible weekend, qualifying way worse than he ever likes to do. Stefan Johansson, Scott Goodyear, Scott Brayton. They all run together, though not in contest with one another. 
Clayton running sixth. He qualified seventh, so he's running it right about where he qualified. You see Teo Fabi there. We haven't seen much for him. Mike Groff is there, right behind his boss, Bobby Reha. line has not actually worn away. Now we saw that when we got here first this weekend. We've had Bush Grand National Cars race on it. We've had support series races, Indy Cars practice, and it did not actually wear that away. I mean, really was a surprise to everybody here. Of course, we had no rain at all all weekend to help the situation. Here on Mashusta, he runs in 16th place as we take a look at the front of the field again. The battle of the Penske cars. They've changed the pronunciation again. They've given it to us four or five different ways. Now it seems that they have settled on Mashusta. They started the year with Matsushita. But he is the Japanese driver. Hiroyuki, by the way, first name. Not Hiro. Hey, Hi Hiro's a perfect name for a racing Absolutely. driver. Absolutely. So at the front of the field, the battle is still between the Penske cars. And Paul Tracy just put an extra lap on Nigel for the points. In the New England 200, the battle is for the lead, and Emerson Fittipaldi now looking at slower traffic of Hiramashusta. Moves up behind Paul Tracy. Nigel Mansell moves in from third place at the same time. That Mansell moves under Tracy. Moves under Fittipaldi as the yellow comes out. Emerson looked to me to get awfully close. There's debris down inside Mario. turn one. Oh, debris, lots of it now. But Emerson looked very, very close to Machusta as he made the pass there. Mario and Scott Goodyear, both against the wall. Scott Goodyear climbs out of the car. Mario stays in it. Not damage, enough room. Damage to the right front wheel. The IndyCar safety crew already there. Scott Goodyear looks back. Mario still in that car. I would have thought he would jump out of that as soon as possible. Sometimes you get dazed and it's much easier to catch your breath and sit there. Thankfully, we see him vacate the machine now. Well, if what they were looking for was another yellow to get them to the finish of the race, here on the 145th lap, indeed it is yellow. As Mario Andretti and Scott Goodyear get together on the front straight. Let's go to Jan. Well, Paul, a quick update as to whether we will see cars on pit road. We just heard from the Penske crew that they would not come in unless they had five laps of yellow. Well, they, now they have gotten exactly what they wanted, and that is there'll be at least five laps of yellow. What that means is they can make it all the way to the end of the race, but like you said, if Emerson Fittipaldi may have gone through some debris, do they risk it? Do they keep track position and keep him on the track, or do they bring him in and check the tires? That's got to be a really tough decision to make. So again, Everybody should now be able to make it to the end on fuel economy, but do you check your tires or stay out? I don't know that that's that hard a decision. Let's remember that Emerson Fittipaldi assumed the lead of the race on the mile at Phoenix after his teammate, Paul Tracy, caught the wall. And in doing so, he crashed as they came back to green. Now, here is the yellow. Watch how close this gets here. Emerson's wheel. Look turns in, almost locks wheels with Machusta, and then pulls away. Very close indeed.